Uh, our first review of the day is going to be for the film The Apprentice. Uh, the Apprentice here, which is directed by Ali uh, Abassi there. Um, and it stars Sebastian Stan, um, who people might know. He's Bucky in the MCU. Um, and Sebastian Stan has also done a variety of other different kind of projects. He really is kind of spreading himself out there, doing a lot of you know different things. Like, for instance, he was in that movie A Different Man that also came out this year. I haven't seen it, but I hear it's very good. Uh, that movie there. He was also in the movie fresh that was that hulu movie there um so i like he does a lot of yeah, the he's kind very of good and fresh um yeah he does a lot of different projects really they're expanding himself as an actor so i really like that a lot so he does that again here in the movie the apprentice where he plays donald j trump there um the infamous uh former president there uh businessman uh huge pop culture figure right now um, and this is probably one of the many uh, Trump biopics we're going to see probably in the next five, ten years, because, you know, they're going to make tons of movies about oh, Trump. Oh, sure. Tons of different actors are going to play him. So, yeah. So expect to probably see that in the next five to ten years about a lot more Trump biopics there. Um, so this is really focusing and narrowing, on, and narrowing in on a Pacific time in Trump's life, you know, specifically the 70s and 80s there. Um, and with his relationship with Roy Cohn, Roy Cohn in this, who's played by Jeremy Strong, who, if you've seen Succession, he's basically kind of playing another Roy Kendall type figure. There. Even the same name. I mean, Roy <laughs> there, he's even playing kind of the same type of figure there. Um, and it seems like that's where the movie really focuses on and uh, their relationship. And it seems like from this movie, it's trying to say that Roy Cohn almost molded Trump into being the figure that he is. He really taught him a lot of things, took him under his wing um, and helped him kind of become the figure that he is today. Um, you know, his whole kind of method of, you know, never admit defeat, uh, you know what I mean? Never say you lost, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know, your your truth is that you know, I'm messing it all up. But he has like this, you know, three kind of facts of life there that he kind of instills there uh, that, you know, and when you look about the real figure of Roy Cohn, very vicious figure, uh, in history there and, uh, you know, all the kind of things he did. And so that's primarily kind of where it takes place. And you see Trump here who this is before, you know, he's uh, Trump Hotel. So a lot of this movie is trying to yeah. him get this building and then and turn it into I forgot the name of uh, the, the building he's trying to tear down to build up Tr Trump Hotel there. But he's trying to do that. That's like his big project in this movie and his effort to do that because everyone's saying that it's not going to work. It's going to be a failure. So he's trying to kind of pull all these strings and get that done with the help of Roy Cohn. And then you see kind of the evolution of how more and more we see this Sebastian Stan as Trump become the Trump that we kind of know here. And like I said, now that Trump is, you know, he was always a popular figure. But now that he's become president, he was president. Now everybody has a Trump impression. Now everybody wants to, you know, do him and his voice and his mannerisms and everything like that. So it's tough for an actor to kind of come into a role like that without kind of trying to seem cartoonish or being a caricature of the real person. And I think Sebastian Stan does a very good job at that of, you know, not seeming like a caricature. You know, he doesn't really try to do the Trump voice. He mostly gets Trump down in his movements as far as like his hand movements, mm -hmm. his lips, his face, you know, uh, things like that. I mean, that's where you see mostly Trump there in, in Sebastian Stan's performance. And the quality, of, like I said, this movie takes place in the 70s and 80s, and the look of the film almost has like this grainy type of 70s, 80s look to it as well. You can see it a little bit in the trailer. Um, yeah, it has artifact. Looks like it has artifacting or artificial artifacting to make it look like it is from that period. Yeah, which I think is a really, really uh, a nice touch on it uh, as well there to kind of make it look like that time period that is kind of set in there. And it doesn't just kind of go like, hey, you know, sometimes with a biopic, it's like these are the greatest hits of this person's life. And then these are the moments that we kind of know. Like I said, it's mostly focused on that kind of strict period of time in his life in the 70s and the 80s there. Um, seeing his family, seeing, you know, his relationship with his first wife, who's in this is played by Maria Belkova. who People might know she was in that uh, Sasha Baron Cohen movie. Uh, she was in what was it called? Uh, Borat. It was Borat, too. She was in that. And then people also might have seen her in uh, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies as well, who she's very funny. She's a really funny woman. 
Uh, I loved her in Borat too. And I loved her in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Here she's playing a much different performance, much more dramatic performance there. And you see that kind of relationship develop uh, a little bit throughout the movie. But the main relationship is with um, Sebastian Stan and Jeremy Strong as both of their figures there. That's the core of this movie. And when they're together, it's really electric. Um, that's where the movie, I think, is the strongest is when they're together. Um, and when you see kind of everything else, not to say it pales in comparison, it's just like everything else feels a little bit more rushed in comparison there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that this is, uh, again, this is tough because of where you're going with this type of figure and, you know, all the kind of different stories that you want to kind of get out there, especially now with, you know, obviously with the election kind of going on. Um, and I think they do a good job at handling that. I think Ali Abbasi does a good job at handling that. Uh, the writer on this, uh, Gabriel Sherman, who I believe is a journalist, uh, as well there. Um, he's a writer on this and he does a really good job at kind of laying that out. Um, there is a part of the movie where Jeremy Strong is gone for a good chunk of it, um, where I think kind of you kind of miss him a bit there and kind of his his play with Trump and the infatuation here is kind of presented as almost romantic that Roy Cohn because Roy Cohn was undercover, you know, he was kind of uh, secretly closeted, he was gay. Um, and that was kind of a very, very much a big thing, especially in the 70s and 80s. Um, he had that kind of going on there. Uh, but I, the way that it kind of presents it is like it doesn't really, at least the way I saw it, maybe somebody will have a different look on it. Um, I mean, Trump is like, it's, it's telling what happened. It's not trying to overly paint him as a villain, I, I don't think. Um, I think it's a very human portrayal of him, uh, I would say there. Uh, even though he does some horrible things in it, but uh, and, and but some of these things really did happen. I mean, you can really uh, look into it. So uh, you do have that going. Um, so yeah, for the good direction of it, the really good performances of it, I could see maybe Jeremy Strong maybe getting best supporting in this um, for his performance as Roy Cohn. I can maybe see that. Uh, and yeah, great performance also by Sebastian Stan. I would give it. Mm, I'd give it a tune in. I give it a good solid tune in for me um any questions there about no i mean uh it seems interesting at least um i'm sad i didn't at least get to check it out by the time i uh, got my hands on it uh or tried to it was really playing in my local area yeah um if people get a chance it's probably on streaming pretty soon i recommend yeah, you check it out likely. um one downfall of the movie i would say is it's too it's too much foreshadowing about him becoming president or running for president like i think they do that like two three times in the movie uh they go like you know he's like i would never run for president only stupid people run for president you know what i mean i would never do that and it, uh, those are actually probably quotes that he he said uh yeah he's past. actually he actually mentioned that people have actually asked you know. him to run for president many times yeah so that's actually not too far-fetched that yeah. that line's in there but I mean, ha heck, the Simpsons made a joke of Trump running for president. Simpsons did it, huh? Simpsons did it. Yeah. And then they wrote later on, it's like, why are we right so right? <laughs> we were, they were jokes. Why? Why did they become reality? Um, but yeah, I mean, so there's, there's a little bit, you know, a lot of that. Can they do it like two, three times in the movie there? Uh, that, that's kind of the only real issue I had. It's like, again, like you said, those are probably, you know, real quotes that they're pulling there. But uh, it was just a little too much of that uh, in the movie. But all the, all the, you know, other than that, it's a very strong movie. Very, very strong um, of it. So a good tune in for me with nice. The Apprentice. All right. 